This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. (laughs) Welcome to DBL. I'm Torian for Jeff. (laughs) Why is my impression just his shoulder? I I don't know. It's not good. I've never actually seen him do that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He doesn't say that? I'm Jeff. Okay, I got to change it. You're right. All right, let's talk Taylor Swift because she's broken her silence on being forced to cancel her concerts in Vienna. So Taylor posted some photos from her heiress tour on Instagram and a very lengthy post. She called the decision to cancel the Vienna shows because of the planned terror attack devastating, but said she was thankful we were grieving concerts and not lives. Taylor also revealed why she chose to stay silent until after the European leg of her tour was finished. She wrote, quote, let me be clear. I'm not gonna speak about something publicly if I think doing so might provoke those who want to harm the fans who come to my show. I do also wanna let you know that she had those girls that were at a Taylor Swift event and there was a stabbing that actually murdered some children. She had them at her show backstage for a special for, you know, get together. Um, Steph, what do you think about her speaking out about this? Well, normally, obviously, I think Taylor is not one to shy away from political issues or voicing her opinion, which is why I think so many people love and relate to her, because for so long, the st- first half of her, of her career, she was always so silent. She said nothing. She said nothing. Yeah, right. Um, so I think she always does put her fans first. It's not all about herself. She's, you know, some of the um, very famous artists have had terrorist attacks and it's turned into something else Mm -hmm. sometimes which is very sad to say but I think she genuinely loves and cares for them and I think the rallying of other people around her and the support is incredible so we saw like the likes of Coldplay uh, trying to support her fans we saw the people in the streets of Vienna playing her music in the streets and giving concerts so I think she's such a positive and beautiful force that obviously there was something very heinous that was trying to happen but it actually brought all of her fans even closer together I agree let's take a look at that Coldplay they played in Vienna uh, to support Taylor. Go ahead. We sing this song with so much love for Taylor, with so much love for Swifties, and we sing this song with love for young people who are brainwashed into doing stupid <laughs> and we send them our love too. We were both young when I first saw you. Close my eyes and the flashback starts so standing there. On a balcony in summer air. Wow. So how do we feel, Al? You were making kind of... I I think this is the world that we live in now. I mean, if you think about uh, people that want... It's sad that we don't, unfortunately, have armies that line up on opposite sides and go after each other. I think the new form of warfare, the new form of uh, communicating that you don't like the status quo and you seek to change that by any means is by going after the unarmed, by creating Mm -hmm. fear and going after citizens. Terrorists means for terror. So whether it's an Ariana Grande concert uh we saw somebody uh trying to assassinate the president Mm -hmm. recently we saw that at the jason aldean concert you have well if if you're looking to cause uh terror what do you have erica you have people corralled in a small area people that are all usually of one like mind and if you want to go after and and send a message as horrifying and sadistic as that message is Concerts and sporting events are the way to go. Yeah, and so I think Taylor did the right thing Yeah, and I think we might need to start to create may I'm sure there already is a playbook for how to prepare for these large concerts months and months and months in advance probably before the tickets even go on in sale. case there's something you were not a right. just wanted to get your take as a cobbler people don't know people swifties you are a swifty leader yeah. <laughs> i was like she's a no. cobbler yeah. uh, cob- they call her uh, the cobbler they're yeah, cobblers are her fans i think that taylor handled this exactly the way that it needed to be handled yeah. i do understand when someone comes for you um like this in terms of the fear and the terror it is a very delicate balance mm-hmm. because your immediate instinct is is to react but if you react in a way that could potentially put someone else in harm sure then th- it's all for not it's kind of like when people end up you know when someone says you know people are threatening me or threatening my family sometimes it's not about their safety it's about the safety of the people who have nothing to do with the reasons why this person might be zeroing in on this person that's a good point uh, I do also want to get to this because people are going crazy the tabloids especially they're having a field day speculating what led to the Jen and Ben's divorce. Page 6 is reporting that their marital problem started 
on their honeymoon. Ben was reportedly unhappy with all the paparazzi following them. Sources also told the outlet Ben sold Jen on being a changed man, but that only lasted a very short time and that he was in a very vulnerable state because he was newly sober. The Daily Mail is reporting that Ben is just impossible to be married to and that Jen was constantly trying to lift his spirits, but it became exhausting. Uh, I want to show you this Grammys clip that people are now going crazy. Steph, I know you saw it on in the Instagram world, but this is where people said, this is when we knew she didn't know she's on camera and she's sort of yelling at him. He sits up and then all of a sudden she realizes, oh, 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 I'm on camera. So a lot of people are saying this is sort of when we knew the audience members knew. She also has a ring, the engagement ring. It's a beautiful ring, very famous, and it is inscribed with not going anywhere. Lies, I tell you. Lies. Well, I think it, I think I don't think it was a lie. You're it just right. meant I'll be with you in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, such a harsher way of saying it. I love it. What do you think, Al? I, you know, I, I don't take a. I, I kind of like that they at least put their best foot forward with the not going anywhere. You know, 51% of marriages are going to fail, but everybody feels the same way at the altar. It's just couple of weeks down the line. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Yeah, after you've picked up a pair of pants for the 18th time and you're like, no more. No and more. And so I think that when you look at a marriage, I think that people say, if you have been divorced, well, that was a failed marriage. But they never account for the fact this is two people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your partner is quits in life. And I know people like this, that they are changed. And sometimes you're just like, trying to clean up, I'm sorry about my wife. Show she never does this. How long can you do that before the mask comes off, Steph, and you're just like, make fun of me all you need to, but I have to leave this toxic relationship. What do you think, Steph? Oh, I mean, I do really feel for them because I do think they gave, the first time around, they were like the ultimate love story, weren't they? And they said at the time they had to break up because of the paparazzi and the pressure was just too much. And then it seems like, the first time we didn't have as much access as we do now with social media the paparazzi are even worse now so we see everything yeah. prime example trevor noah just commentating and all that's going on behind or we saw them you know i saw an awful uh, video or clip and, and j-lo's in the car and ben's like slamming the door and she's just like Tre ah. she's just always trying yeah. she's trying and he was he's so trying. unhappy yeah I I have to give both of them credit though because there would have been a time for a lot of people where it was more important to prove everyone wrong right. and yes. be miserable right, right, right. And they chose, than right. to just choose themselves. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that that is an important message as well. A lot of people are in relationships and marriages where it's like, I'm just, I'm going to ride this out yeah. because everyone needs to be wrong about right. this. And ultimately, you just want to be happy. Yeah, it's a waste of time. And apparently, allegedly, she kept waiting for him to file, and she's like, it's, it's my time. I'm yeah. filing. Mm. So, coming up on TBL, why is Francis Ford Coppola's new movie getting blasted even before it's released? Plus, a woman in her 60s, yes, you heard me right, 60s, she is working towards becoming Miss Olympia for a second time. I don't even know how to do a sit-up. <laughs> okay. She's beautiful. She's amazing. Wow.
Welcome back to DBL. Francis Ford Coppola's new movie, it's getting blasted before it's even been released. So the film's distributor was forced to pull the trailer from YouTube because, you ready for this? It contained fake quotes from movie reviewers. The quotes were from reviews of Coppola's old films to show how critics often underestimated him. Like this one for The Godfather, calling it a sloppy, self-indulgent movie. Or this one, saying Apocalypse Now was an epic piece of trash. Or the late Roger Ebert calling Dracula a triumph of style over substance. Well, it turns out they're all fake. In a statement, Lionsgate said it screwed up and it has since pulled the trailer from their site. Does anyone here clap if you believe the movie review quotes? Oh, no. Someone went, Daniel went like this. <laughs> no, why, well, why is it no? Why is it, shouldn't you, we, we entrust the LA Times, Siskel and Ebert, or whatever the equivalent is, to be the movie experts to tell us, should we go see this movie? But nobody claps, so what is that? Well, no one clapped because they don't believe that the reviews were fake or real. Mm -hmm. Not because. Oh, I thought they meant in, in general. Do the reviews? I was like, excellent I question, Al, <laughs> for something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think when you see just like this movie's great, and it's like Pete Smith. Like, who's that? I don't know who that is. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak up on behalf Please. of my friend Marcus Allen because he was also named uh, a critic of the year, and um, the running I back. No, no. <laughs> Although it is funny when people get him confused. Uh, no, he is a, he's been a movie critic for a very long time. He's been a radio and television personality, but he's a very well-respected movie critic. Mm -hmm. And I will look to see if, if his he review, likes it. Yeah, because he's your Ebert. I know, right, right. I got gotcha, you. Right. I got gotcha. you. Mine's like Manola Dargis. I think that's how you say her name from the New York Times. But do you guys count on anyone? Or I, is I it definitely, I do definitely count on. Um, I think Rotten Tomatoes are very honest. Oh, Specifically, tomatoes. Naz Perez who is amazing she's one of the best oh, contributors to know. ever right. but she's very honest and yeah. she will go through every single detail and her she's one of the best interviewers of celebrities that I've ever seen oh, so right. if she yeah. says it's good I know it's legitimate I love that but yeah if it's just like some random name on like that I mean no. who are these people I know right making rotten it tomatoes I love oh, that. that was the best all right do I have time or should we go are we good we can go coming up on DBL you don't want to miss our interview with Cheryl Grant who's an inspirational woman in her 60s competing for her second Miss Olympia title. Welcome back. When many are thinking about retirement, Cheryl Grant left corporate America to start her fitness journey and become Miss Olympia. Earlier, she joined us with tips on how to get fit for life. Welcome back, Miss Cheryl. 
Thank you so much. So glad to see you guys. So yeah. glad to see Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. Some people feel that after the age of 60, many of our viewers watching right now are probably like the best years are behind them. Why do you disagree with that statement? Um, because life is to be lived and as long as you have breath in your body then every day is a great day and especially as we get older I think the one thing that we have is wisdom that is one of our keys we've learned some of the life's lessons we've been through some things now it's time for us to take hold of everything that we've learned and make it blossom better than it ever has before our best days are ahead of us not behind us mm, I love that so as we get older it's more of a challenge to get fit let's be honest so how do you feel about people turning to weight loss drugs for help? Well, there's quick fixes in life, and you can always use a quick fix, but it's not about quick fixes. It's about behavioral habits. What's going to sustain you over the long term? What you want to do is incorporate things into your lifestyle and how you live every day, how you wake up, how you do one thing. My mentor, Les Brown, told me is how you do everything. You want to wake up with a focus and being very um, poignant about what it is that you want to manifest in your life. And in that, then you can start to take the steps necessary to get you there but it's all about taking one step at a time Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is a fitness journey so what advice do you have for someone who wants to start their fitness journey the first thing that I'm going to say to you is get into action. That's the first thing that you could do. Take the first step. It could be something as simple as walking. Don't expect to see instant results. What you want to do is just get into a regiment and being consistent with whatever it is that you decide to do, whether it's walking every day, but being consistent about it, being consistent about the nutrition that you're putting in your body, be mindful of the things that you're putting into your mind. Are you telling yourself you can, or are you telling yourself you're can't either way you're right which one are you going to choose mm -hmm. and when you choose you can definitely step into a direction that's going to give you a fulfilling life guaranteed that is one of my favorite quotes of all time but Cheryl you're working towards your second Miss Olympia title Woo! no biggie what's the <laughs> hardest part about training for something like that like I said before, taking the steps. It's about definitely getting into action. And for me, it's you develop habits. So you have to break those habits. You have to learn how to, when you have a goal, it's not about getting to the end fast. It's about every step you take every day towards that goal. It's about being patient with the process, being patient with you, learning how to love you through the process and not being critical of yourself. And for me, I have to apply the same tactics as I go for Miss Olympia for my second title. It's the daily steps that I take every day, the choices that I make every day that's going to get me there, deciding to get up whether I feel like it or not, whether I'm motivated or not, because I have an end goal. And I can tell you, I feel vibrant when I do it. I always never want to go to a workout, but I can tell you, I always feel better after I've done it. That's great to hear. Now, I want our audience to sit down before I say this and don't come at me for lying. You are 62. I'm going to let <laughs> people know. Bit of, and, you look and amazing. Funny thing. <laughs> I, well, first of all, I'm, I'm going to take my flowers. So thank you for giving them to me. <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate that. But I'm about to be 63. But here is the thing. Age truly is a number. And I know as we get older, things start to happen. Trust me, I experience those same things. But what I don't do is allow life to stop me from what it is that I want to manifest fest in my life and right now for me Miss Olympia is it's a title but you don't have to want Miss Olympia you can just really just want to live a better lifestyle and especially in this world that we're living in today it's very important that we're taking care of ourselves mentally emotionally and spiritually thank you for joining us Cheryl DBL Nation go to CherylGrant.com and get your copy of fit for life a toolkit for your next personal transformation also reserve your spot for Cheryl Fit for Life Retreat, ooh, and Buta Kanya. Nice, October 17th through the 20th. Thank you again, Cheryl. Thank you, great to see you. We'll be right back. Thank you guys Thanks. for having me. Blessings always. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Welcome back. We got some great products from our friends at Morning Save. Check them out. Steph, what do you have for us today? Hello, Tori. Hello, DBL Nation. We are super excited to show you all of the deals today. They are absolutely fabulous. You're going to love what we've got to show you. So let's check it all out. First up, we've got the two-pack Extreme Comforts Padded Foam Cushions. Ooh. This still includes two cushions, which will help improve posture and provide relief on your tailbone and lower back. We've seen this priced as high as $31 <laughs> yeah. each. However, we have got a two-pack for just $29.99. That is saving 52%. Up next, we have got the Ring Wired Video Doorbell. Ooh. This still includes one ring doorbell with an installation kit. Now, this is usually priced up to $150. Right. We have got it for $74.99. That is saving you guys 50%, and this is a household name. That is a household name, and it's a must. It's just a must. We have one. I have it on all the doors, and I've had things happen where I've needed to have that ring doorbell. So I just have to say half off. This is a no-brainer. No-brainer. Up next, we've got the Beckham Hotel Collection Down Alternative Comforters. Wow. This summer clearance deal includes one comforter. We've seen this as prices between $41 to $60. Okay, not We've got it for $15. That's saving up to 75%. And then last stop, Tori, we've got the JVC Wireless Speaker with surround sound. The deal includes one speaker, available in three different colors. We've got black, blue, and pink. So this has been priced up to $20. We have got it for $10. That is saving 50%. Everyone, head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices, or you can scan the QR code right on screen. It will take you directly to these products, all on MorningSave's website. Thank you so much, Steph. Some good stuff there. Welcome back. Okay, many of you have unused gift cards lying around the house. Am I right? Well, Starbucks is laughing all the way to the bank. It turns out the coffee chain holds nearly $1.8 billion in unredeemed gift cards. That's a 9% increase from the same time last year, and they're making interest on it, and they're just hand over money, frappuccino, mocha, latte, latte, latte. <laughs> That's I, a latte, latte. I latte. think it, it's brilliant, and it goes back to like my days working on a cruise ship. They don't, you don't pay cash on the boat. They give you a card. And so mm. you spend more money because you're, first of all, you've had a few and you're yeah. like, hey, the blonde, get her around and they're, <laughs> they're pretty girl, you get her. Like, cause you, but it's not, you're not peeling out cash and you, your partner's not going, hey, you spent 200 bucks. It's just a fake plastic card. And because of that, I think cards get thrown away Put inside in, of right. like gift, not gift cards, inside of like regular cards. And you know, at the end of the night, they get tossed away. And I think a lot of these aren't even in people's possession. I think that they're in the, in the dumpster somewhere. So well, it's, it's a great it's a great model. It's a great model and a lot of small businesses have definitely ah. caught on because if you can get people, especially during the holidays mm. or you know, certain times of the year, if you can get them to buy early, a lot of them aren't ever going to use be it. redeemed. Good so Lord. it's kind of a money grab that a lot of people don't use. think about. Do you, Do you think cash will come back? No. No. Tell tell the people in <laughs> step what did they say about your daughter when you said something about Oh, change. Well, well, oh, when I, I we were at the Cherry Creek Mall and uh, I gave her 50 bucks and she kind of took it like I had handed her them. And I was like, uh, 50 it, I was like, is that not enough money? She was like, no, I just never handle cash. And, really? Yeah. And I was like, have you do you have any quarters? And she goes, do you mean coins? <laughs> <laughs> Like I felt crazy. so old. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, guys. Like coins? <laughs> coins?